Hello everyone, I am going to make a presentation on introduction to safety instrumented system and this topic will be on functional safety. Video is being taken on behalf of instrumentationtools.com and automationcommunity.com. Kindly subscribe to the channel. Functional safety, we will go over the brief of it. Functional safety means the safety function will be performed automatically as per the intended function in the event of any hazard happening. Functional safety enables the techniques to get rid out of unacceptable risk. This is achieved through the safety life cycle. In general, it is adapted from two main industrial standards IEC 61508 and IEC 61511. These standards help address the safety life cycle and address different types of failure from faults. We already saw these two standards. IEC stands for International Electrotechnical Commission. There are two standards 61508 and 61511 which governs the safety requirements. To improve the plant process safety, functional safety systems enable the orderly shutdown of processing units when abnormal situations occur that are beyond the capabilities of basic process control system or operators to correct or prevent a hazard. Under steady state scenario, the plants are operating in an automated way using the basic process control system which is always doing some action to maintain the process in a steady state and giving production output. If there is any hazard happening and the basic process control system is unable to contain that hazard, then safety instrumented system comes into picture whole concept and study about the safety instrumented system are part of functional safety. Functional safety will go over the multiple layers. The goal of functional safety layers is to reduce the risk of accident or injury. The many layers of protection that a plant uses to safeguard the process, equipment, personnel and the community. Here the different layers are in different colors for our understanding. This is a process, normal process which is operating in a study mode. Plants are designed to operate in this study mode. And here we have the process control which is loop control and measurement everything which is done by the BPCS basic process control system. So you are seeing it this one in the green color. So a plant has to operate in the safe zone, green zone and then further the limits are exceeding. For example, we will just understand this using a small p and ID over here. There is a chemical tank which is having a hydrogen chloride facility for example. Required chemical is being sent into the tank using the isolation valve, emergency block valve, flow control valve and then it is being admitted into the tank and uh, in the tank the pressure is being measured, the temperature is being measured volume of the tank is being measured and based on the volume if the level is going down this control valve is operating using a flow indicating controller and then admitting additional chemical into the tank. Here we are having level switches for high level indication and another level switch for the high high indication based on which the emergency block wall will shut. Tank level keeps on increasing and it is not able to be controlled by the control valve function and in this case level high high LSH means level switch high high. So when it reaches to this limit then sensor will sense and give a signal to close this emergency block wall. This is the operation sequence and when this valve also fails, emergency block wall also fails due to some reason or some components inside the block wall is not functioning, say solenoid valve. So it may not function properly and then the chemical keeps on adding into the tank which will result in increasing in the tank level and getting the pressure inside the tank getting high. So in this case there is PRV known as pressure relief valve. This operates and then bend the pressure into the atmosphere and in further case the pressure relief valve also does not function and uh, there is any choking or any plugging inside the pressure relief valve 
and it is not able to relieve the pressure out of the tank so then there are chances of spillover happening above the tank uh, top surface and then it will get into the dikes this is a dike generally the hazardous chemicals and all other hydrocarbon related materials are stored in a dike in the process area plant and uh, this is one kind of protection layer and further if it is exceeding suppose the chemical is keep on adding into the tank and then it gets out due to all failures it gets out and getting filled in that uh, dike area so there are chances of high chances of getting any further hazard maybe a fire so which requires a plant emergency response so we will go uh, we are just uh, going through this one in, in through the layers description and then the normal operation process is designed to operate in normal mode and process control which is bpcs is controlling and keeping the process in, within the green zone and if the bpcs limits or uh, controllable limits are exceeding it gives into an alarm which is level such high in this case and in this alarm requires an operator intervention to make a field visit and then close relevant valve to uh, minimize the level increasing and further if it is exceeding and uh, it reaches to the level such high high and this is a trip limit wherein safety instrumented system acts and then the emergency block wall used to shut off the chemical into the tank and further if the valve fails and uh, in such cases the active protection in this case some incident has happened so the failure of uh, the emergency block wall happened and then the chemical admission into the tank is not able to be contained so uh, now it's uh, resulting in an incident in this incident and uh, during this condition which is an orange zone and uh, the prv is taking into action and it is trying to lift the pressure from the vessel and still the pressure cannot be relieved using the prv due to its failure and it is calling for a passive protection which is a bund and tikes so whenever there is a chemical spillover and it has to be collected in the dikes and drained out to the proper drainage system using a proper process so this is a loss of containment and if this is still not contained because Uh, operator uh, misses the action and then the emergency block wall does, uh, does not act pressure relief valve does not act and then the the chemical keeps on adding into the tank so it keeps on adding and it is overflowing from the dike also in this case it is calling for a plant emergency response in the plants there are health safety and environment team is there wherein the process safety personnel are sitting and there are some trained people who will take an action during any kind of such emergencies so that's why it's put in the black color and uh, they will take into, uh, they will take action to contain any further hazard spreading out further it is spreads out and there is a chance of any gas leak any fire happening in the plant then it calls for any community response so community response will be called off by the plant director and uh, the people around the area will be required to be moved to a safe zone if you see in this production layer graph each of uh, this acting independently with the independent sensors or control valve and shut off valves like this or mechanical relief devices like this so all these first four layers are known as prevention layers so within this the normal plant has to control and then limit the hazard not to exceed if it is not able to be contained within this zone then it's a, called a mitigation layer now so in this case that's why we are saying here the, an incident has happened now there is no choice or no question no the emergency has to act and then and mitigate the hazard from spreading further so these are all the different layers in the functional safety okay so and uh, how functional safety is achieved there are many steps involved in it and we are just going through this uh, seven eight brief steps so identify system with the design of the plant using a pre and id manual and process manual 
and uh, identify the requirements of any safety design requirements safety requirements operational excellence etc in the next uh, step a1 and the next step the hazards has to be identified using the asop study and there are some safety analysis operation safety reports has to be prepared based on the iso and other things and uh, even based on the iec requirement standards and you are using this one the risk assessment has to be performed by the team and there will be a process safety personnel process operation personnel who are having a thorough knowledge of the process and what kind of risk can happen in the plant and the, they have to be having good knowledge of the process so that only they can identify if there are any chances of any as that can happen any risk can happen in this step the lopa if i'm lopa for layer of protection analysis failure mode effect analysis from a fault tree analysis and uh, combined fault tree and uh, another matrix is there this analysis all these things are being done in the risk assessment stage so and then quite functional safety layers the protection layers what we saw in the previous slide the different layers has to be designed and allocated and further uh, next as a next step the designs Engineered sys. Then wherever the safety instrumented system is required, the number of sensors and the number of uh, final elements and uh, the different seal level has to be identified using engineering study, and then the sys has to be designed. And there are different tools, Simulink, MATLAB, LabVIEW, like that. Different tools are there which is required to be used during this step, and then. this is a step of again uh, engineering study and then the plant is being installed and uh, after installation the safety instrumented system need to be verified for its proper operability so all these are known as uh, safety management systems and as we discussed in earlier slide also iec 61511 iec 61508 these are the different international standards giving the licensing requirement so functional safety where it has to focus the functional safety focus is on ensuring safety critical functions and functional threats in the system sub system and software are analyzed and verified for correct behavior per safety requirements program software just doing the calculations and giving the output command for the final elements in case of any sensor signal goes high or low so in this uh, case the logic servers are working and giving a output command so the all this system sub system and software has to be analyzed in this uh, functional safety functional safety focus includes any functional failure conditions faults and appropriate mitigation in the design as we saw in the previous step where uh, is design and this is part of the requirement of the sys engineering and functional safety is complete scope is to treat the function of a component or subsystem as part of the function of the entire automatic protection function of any system there are many subsystems within a major system so everything has to be automated the automatic protection function should be ensured as a part of functional safety functional safety standards and functional safety methods should focus on electrical electronic programmable electronic systems as well as non electrical electronic programmable systems which are the safety reliefs relief valves prv psv there are rupture disc to relieve the pressure also and dikes everything these are all non eps because they are not electronic they are mechanical protection devices so functional safety who are the participants to do the functional safety analysis process and hazard analysis and safety instrumented function allocation strategy studies use clear idea for functional safety engineers has to put many protection layer clarifications into action this is the one what we discussed in the couple of slides before about the different layers how to allocate the number of sensors and number of uh, the, the type of uh, logic solver and uh, the type of final elements and all as far as sys is concerned 
and many different layers like your mechanic protection devices etc so who will be the part of it uh, the functional safety experts process licenses operation personnel process design engineers plant safety experts assigned safety instrumented system coaches of the facility will take part in the functional safety analysis these are the people who are participating and designing the different types of requirements they will be part of the uh, plant engineering design team we will go over the functional safety standards so functional safety standards activities follows the international standards which is iec and cisa standards iec is 61508 is one standard 61511 is another standard and c isa 84 is another standard iec stands for international electrotechnical commission and c stands for american national standards institution isa stands for instrument society of automation iec 61508 is giving the details about the functional safety of electrical electronic programmable electronic safety related systems so the standard is giving uh, the requirements for all this iec 61511 this is specific for the process industry this is giving the standard requirements for the implementation commissioning validation and verification of the safety instrumented systems iec 84 it is application of safety instrumented system for process industries these two standards are for the process industries and iec 61508 is for the manufacturers who make the product for the safety instrumented system it may be sensors may be a logic solver it may be a final control element all the components within these three so sensor logic solver and final control elements has to be certified and has to follow the iec standards what is the role of functional safety standards iec standards focus on eliminating the risk and maintain the plants in safe state here just uh, we are seeing a small pictorial representation uh, wherein functional safety which ensures the safety through electrical electronic program electronic technology and its main intention is to maintain a plant in a safe state and if there is any source of danger is happening and in this case it is going from the normal operating mode to a hazardous situation so functional safety standards take into action functional safety standards has a set of rules which has to be adapted by the industries and when they are during the engineering and design stage and it has to be implemented properly and as well as maintain throughout the life of the plant to achieve the safety of the plant and people and equipment so the requirement whenever any hazard is happening it has to get into the safe zone to get out of the hazard for which the uh, functional safety standards helps to develop the standards and other thing it is having a safety function requirements safety integrity requirements so so many things so we will be discussing different topics in the future presentations thank you everyone